you're traveling on vacation and find out that your luggage was stolen. Or one morning you wake up to find that your car was broken into and your laptop was taken. Did you know that in both of these situations, if you're renting and you have a renter's policy, you would be covered by your renter's insurance? Some things you might not know about renter's insurance and why it's important to consider if you don't already have it, coming up on this episode of the How Insurance Works podcast. Welcome to the How Insurance Works podcast. The content in this podcast should not be considered insurance advice and is for general informational purposes only. Insurance forms and endorsements vary based on insurance company, changes in addition dates, regulations, court decisions, and state jurisdiction. So please consult your agent for further advice. And now back to How Insurance Works with Mike McGilvery. Welcome to the How Insurance Works podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If we have not yet met here, my name is Mike McGilvery. I'm a second generation licensed agent and broker at Shaw Moses Mendenhall and Associates in Southern California. My goal is simple. It's to help educate and inform on various aspects of insurance and the insurance industry in the hope that it might help you make better informed decisions. I don't have a lot of stuff, so I really don't think I need a renter's policy. This is a common reaction that we see to renter's policies, and I believe it's because the perception is that renter's policies only cover the stuff inside your apartment. And that's true. But we think the other misconception is, if they're only covering the stuff in my apartment, they're much too expensive for me to consider right now. Well, renter's policies actually cover a lot more than that, and they're a lot more affordable than people think. There's a lot of reasons to consider a renter's policy. We're going to highlight a lot of the basic coverages in this podcast, and we hope we can shatter the myth that renter's policies are more expensive than people think. A note to parents, if you have a son or daughter away at college, we would recommend you strongly consider helping them with a renter's policy while they're away at school. We'll explain some of the reasons why in this podcast. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about, number one, what a renter's policy covers. Number two, show you that they aren't as expensive as most people think. And number three, we're going to give you some helpful tips in managing your renter's policy. So what does a renter's policy cover? Well, one, your personal property. And this is the first most understood coverage when it comes to renter's policies. Yes, a renter's policy is going to cover all of the things in your apartment, your personal property, and it's called your personal property coverage. There's a fire in your apartment, your things are ruined by water that floods your apartment because a pipe bursts, or if your things are stolen or vandalized in your apartment, your renter's policy is going to cover your property. But what most people don't know is that your renter's policy is going to cover your things outside the apartment as well, even when you're traveling or away on vacation, like if your luggage gets stolen or a laptop gets stolen out of your car, as we mentioned in the beginning of the podcast. When something's stolen out of your car, that is not covered under your auto insurance policy, but in your renter's policy if you're renting and you have a policy. Now, if your entire car is stolen, that's covered under your auto insurance. But if something is stolen inside your car and taken, that is going to be covered under your renter's policy. How about this one? And parents with sons or daughters at college, here's a good one for you. What about a stolen bike? This is another common claim that we see. Whether we have a college student at college riding their bike around or whether we just simply might be riding our bike around, we lock up our expensive mountain bike or road bike and we come back and see that the lock has been cut and the bike's been stolen. Well, your bike would be covered under the personal property coverage in your renter's policy. So it's important to note that renter's policies don't just cover your stuff inside your apartment, but outside your apartment as well. And renter's policies usually provide worldwide coverage if they're, if they're written correctly. You want to check with your policy, check with your agent, and go over the policy language, but in most well-written renter's policies, it's going to provide worldwide coverage. So what else does a renter's policy cover? Well, it's going to cover you if you cause injury to somebody else or damage somebody else's property inside or outside your apartment. This is called your personal liability coverage. In last week's podcast, we talked a lot about personal liability coverage, and one of the most common claims we talked about was dog bites. So if you're out walking your dog or at the dog park with your dog, and your dog actually accidentally bites somebody, that person decides to sue you, your renter's policy is going to cover you for your defense costs, the insurance company is going to hire an attorney to defend you, and your renter's policy is going to cover you for medical costs and any judgment that might be levied against you. 
Check on our podcast last week for more information on personal liability coverage, but it's an important coverage to have if you're renting, especially if you own a dog. Now, what if you damage somebody else's property? This could be something as innocuous as a bad water leak that you caused by accident. And I'm going to give you an example of a claim that we're dealing with right now. As you know, we always like to post videos of these podcasts on howinsuranceworks.co to show relevant pictures or policy language that demonstrate real-life examples. Well, we have a client right now that owns a commercial building. He has renters on the second floor, and there are businesses on the bottom floor. One of the renters accidentally left the faucet on, got distracted with a phone call. The faucet was left on. There was a terrible flood in the bathroom. Unfortunately, the water caused a significant amount of damage to a space below that a business was getting ready to move into on the first floor. Now, if you are watching this on howinsuranceworks.co, you're going to see the pictures that this water damage did. It's about a $15,000 claim, and this would be covered in a renter's insurance policy under your liability coverage. Now, without renter's insurance, if the renter is sued, they would be out of pocket for that $15,000, whatever it might cost. So personal liability in your renter's policy is also going to cover slips, falls, and trips in your apartment. So if you're hosting a party and a guest slips and falls, twists their ankle, and hits their head on the counter, maybe they don't have medical insurance on their own and maybe they're looking at pretty high medical bills. They could sue you for their medical bills. And if this is the case, their renters, your renter's policy is going to likely cover you in that situation, as long as you didn't hurt them intentionally. Here's another situation we've seen regarding somebody else's property. What if you accidentally cause a fire inside your apartment? Maybe the oil pan catches fire on the stove, you knock over a candle, and it causes a fire in the apartment. The damage that that fire does to the building, that you don't own, of course, you're renting, but the damage that's done to that building would be covered under your personal liability coverage in your renter's policy. Your stuff that gets damaged would also be covered under your personal property coverage. So a lot of coverages regarding personal liability that are offered to you in a renter's policy that can be very, very important to have. Loss of use coverage. And what if your neighbor's apartment catches fire or there's a fire at your complex? Maybe there's such a bad flooding from a pipe that bursts that you have to move out of that apartment for a while until things are fixed. It's just not habitable for a while. Maybe your apartment's significantly vandalized and you're being forced to move out. You might have to rent another apartment. You might have to get a hotel or a motel. You might have to eat out more often. All of these expenses are going to cost money. And this is where your renter's policy steps in. There is a coverage called loss of use coverage. And that'll provide you the money that you need for the extra expenses incurred if you have to move out. Money to help with a hotel or a motel. Money to help with extra expenses. So another important coverage on your renter's policy and another reason to consider renter's insurance if you don't already have it. So to summarize a few things, a renter's policy is going to cover your stuff. It's going to cover your personal property, not just inside your apartment, but outside your apartment as well. It'll likely cover you if your bike is stolen, if a laptop stolen out of your car, or if your luggage is taken at the airport. A renter's policy is going to help cover you if you accidentally injure someone or damage somebody else's property. Your dog bites someone. There's a leak in your unit that damages a unit below you or next to you. You start a fire accidentally on the stove and it damages part of the building. Your friend slips, falls, hits their head at a party you're hosting. They don't have medical insurance, so they're suing you for their medical bills. And loss of use coverage. Again, if there's a fire at your complex, very bad flooding, and your complex is significantly vandalized, and you are being forced to move out while that's fixed, a renter's policy is going to cover the extra expenses, getting a hotel room, renting another apartment temporarily. Any extra expenses that you incur, your renter's policy is likely going to cover for you. So there's a lot more renter's policy is going to do for you than just cover the stuff inside your apartment. And we told you number two at the beginning of the podcast, we're going to try to show you that it's not as expensive as people think. How much does all this cost? Well, anywhere from $130 to $210 a year. That's $10 to $17 per month for all of that coverage. Now, 
Costs are going to depend on the coverage that you select and the amount of coverage, but a good estimate really is anywhere between $130 and $210 a year. Again, that is $10 to $17 a month. On the video of this podcast on howinsuranceworks.co, we're going to show an example of a renter's policy we recently wrote for a client's daughter. You'll see the cost of that renter's policy is $132 a year or $11 a month. Part of the reason that this particular policy is a little bit more on the inexpensive side is we did reduce the loss of use coverage to $7,500 a year. The reason being is that a, this client's daughter can move into her parents' house if she's forced to move out of her apartment because of a fire or a bad water leak. So the client felt she didn't need that much coverage in loss of use. And that's another way to reduce your premium. You can, if you have another place to go, another you go to your parents' house, or if you have a friend you can stay with, you can lower your loss of use coverage a little bit. That has to be customized for your needs, so of course talk to your agent about that. Now, I wanted to give a few helpful tips with your renter's policy as well. First, understand that not all renter's policies are going to cover or provide enough coverage for jewelry, fine art, certain collectibles, so review the type of property that you have with your agent. You'll likely need to schedule expensive items like fine art collectibles separately on something that we call a personal property floater or a floater policy. Same goes for expensive watches or expensive jewelry. It's also important to try to catalog all the items that you have that are of higher value. Think your bike, TV, laptop, your computer, for example. Take pictures of those items, take pictures of the serial numbers, catalog that on a spreadsheet, Put all of the pictures and the spreadsheet on your hard drive of your, of your computer and a separate flash drive that you keep away from home. You could, do, you could put a flash drive in a safety deposit box, but have it in two different locations, but do try to catalog everything that you have. The pictures that you take in your apartment, they're going to be helpful to give the insurance company a general idea of what items you had that aren't quite as expensive, general furniture, tables, chairs, things like that. When you travel, Take a picture of your luggage and some of the items that you have before you leave. If you have some expensive clothing that you're bringing along, take a quick picture of the labels, what you have, what you're bringing. It'll only take a second. Because remember, if your luggage is stolen while you're traveling, it's likely your renter's policy is going to cover you. And if you can document what you're bringing along, it's going to help the insurance company quite a bit in a claim situation. Now, we mentioned last week on our podcast on personal liability. Uh, understand you're going to have some exclusions in your renter's policy. These are things that aren't covered. As an example, and we did talk about this last week as well, if you hurt somebody intentionally, that is not going to be covered in your renter's policy. So just be sure to go over the exclusions in your renter's policy with your agent. Understand also that when it comes to breeds of dogs, some insurance companies either won't write a renter's policy or they will, but they'll exclude certain breeds of dogs. Typical breeds that are excluded, pit bulls, rottweilers, chows, dobermans, and German shepherds. So if you have one of those dogs and your dog accidentally bites someone, understand your coverage might not respond because that particular breed of dog is excluded. However, most breeds of dogs will be included in your renter's policy. Check your policy and the policy language. Every company is a little bit different. So I hope this podcast was helpful in demonstrating the value of renter's policies that they don't just cover the stuff in your apartment. And to the parents listening, I would, again, strongly encourage that you consider a renter's policy for your son or daughter while they're away at school, or if they've recently moved out of the house and you're helping them get on their feet. If you have a what-if situation for us, let us know. Email us. You can go to www.howinsuranceworks.co and we may feature your question on the next podcast. For all of our other social media links, you can also visit us at www.howinsuranceworks.co. They are all listed there. If you'd like to reach out to me directly, feel free to do so. You can reach out to me at Mike Mack at howinsuranceworks.co. That's Mike Mack at howinsuranceworks.co. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you on the next one.